Now, 40 years on from the Falklands War, a group of UK veterans have returned to the islands for the first time to mark Remembrance Sunday. 255 British military personnel lost their lives in the conflict, which lasted 74 days. Our defence correspondent Jonathan Beale has travelled back to the Falklands with some of those who survived. San Carlos Bay today, a picture of peace and tranquility. But 40 years ago, this was known as Bomb Alley, with Argentine jets attacking a British task force sent to liberate these islands on the other side of the world. You see that really grainy footage now, but it takes you right back. <laughs> Yeah, they're having an end both. Planes screaming through here and everybody just <laughs> shooting at it. And it was wild. Gary Marshall and Mark White were here in May 1982 so in, in the first wave of the assault. This is the first time they've returned. And it's bringing back painful memories. They came over the hill, two Picaras, and dropped the bombs onto the actual refrigeration plant. We lost quite a few guys in that, and one of them was Aaron's uncle Paul. Thought he was wounded during the attack, and he subsequently died of his wounds on the 10th of June on Uganda. You know, four days before the end of the actual conflict itself. So sad. Over the hill from there. Sad time. Some of their comrades who never came back, never lived to tell the tale, now lie in this small cemetery. It's for the survivors to honour and remember. But for Gary Platts, this return has not been easy. He's been putting it off for 40 years. I don't really think we closed, I didn't close that book. I kind of just left the, the, the ending unread, um, which is, uh, you know, something that most people like to put closure on. Certainly when you lose people, there needs to be an end point or a point where you get comfortable even if it doesn't finish. Is this the end point for you? The closure? It needs to be a place I'm comfortable with and I haven't been so far. So I need to be comfortable that, that my survivor guilt and that my, my anguish at what I went through and certainly the, the, the pain that I see others still did to this day going through, I need to, to get to a place where I can accept that. You at peace here? Not yet. But you're glad you came? You are. Gary lost three good friends in this short 10-week war, mates who he never had a chance to say a proper goodbye. <laughs> this is where he came and this is where he ended. And so he's still here, I think, yeah. Jackie Giffen has come to remember her brother. Brett Patrick Giffen was one of the first casualties of the war, killed when his helicopter was shot down. He was buried at sea. There is no grave for Jackie to visit. For her, there'll always be a void. But this trip has provided comfort. Coming here and meeting people, um, ex-soldiers um, that were there has meant an awful lot because it was real and they say, oh, I know him and I knew him and, oh, I remember the gazelles went down and, and yeah, so it, it's, that's very sort of uh, reassuring, very comforting in a strange way. It may now be 40 years ago, but in the Falklands, they'll never be forgotten. Here in the capital, Stanley, there's a silhouette for each of the 255 British servicemen who lost their lives. They died 8,000 miles from home. But here, they'll always be remembered. The distance of time may have made these islands even more remote to many. But the British forces who fought here are still living with this conflict. A war which, though painful, they still believe was just. Jonathan Beale, BBC News, the Falkland Islands.